So now let's talk a little bit about small hive beetles. They originally started right here in the South, but now they have spread nationwide, almost to all regions. Uh, the small hive beetles are a pest to the hive. They are these little black bugs that kind of look like a triangle of sorts. And if you see one, I guarantee there's more than one in your hive. Where will you find those? Those will be up on the top part of the hive. And at times, the colony will put propolis around them, creating a jail for them, keeping them within that back area of the hive. Typically, that's on the upper part of the hive, up above where the honey is. The issue with small hive beetles is, is if you don't get in front of these, it's going to be a real headache. And I'll go through for those that have have let them get out of control, what you have to do before you lose your hive. We want to go on the offensive against these small hive beetles. Um, the small hive beetle has a life cycle, and let's step through the life cycle itself here. The number one at the top just shows that the female comes in and lays her eggs within the cell. Those cells are typically where pollen is. The bees will go in and pack the pollen on those. And then number two, the larva has popped open from that pollen and they begin number three to crawl out of the hive, out of the, the bottom board. And in this picture, it's a solid bottom board. And then they fall off the front of the hive onto the ground. And number four is, is that they burrow into the moist ground, then they pupate and then they'll come back out of the ground. And number five is they fly in through the entrance of the hive. And number six is where they begin the havoc within the hive. That's the, the cycle that you will see when it comes to small hive beetles. We've talked through the laying of the eggs. One of the telltales that you have issues going on is you'll find pollen debris on the bottom board or the screen bottom board of your hive. And this is a quick, 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 hey, this is what I've got going on because pollen shouldn't be down here uh, on the bottom board. So that that's your first telltale that you've got issues there. As I stated, the larva will look like an inchworm crawling uh, within the hive. And what they will do is they'll get into your honey and that will get converted into alcohol. And you'll smell an alcohol uh, smell coming out of the hive when you open it up. Once uh, they have matured enough by eating through your honey, they're gonna be looking for light and crawling out of the hive entrance and then going into the ground. Now, when Clemson University uh, did a quick study on this, um, I shouldn't say a quick study, it was a lengthy study, they found that these larva will crawl up to 14 feet from the front of the hive. And there's a couple of things that we can do that would help with this stage. And that is to put down a black cloth or landscaping fabric so that it will burn the larva when they hit. Now, this is a good picture is they have landscaping fabric underneath this mulch that is around these hives. And I've also seen people use Riverstone also to help dress up the bee yard on, on that there. Landscaping fabric is really good on that. Now, when these small hive beetles emerge, they're only the size of a tip of, of a pencil lead. They're very small. And this is a good picture of them pupating into the ground. They go down about two to three inches and that's it. And it takes a period of time for them to mature into the small hive beetle that you see inside your hive, which is black and triangular in shape. After they pupate, they fly back into the hive. When they're in the hive, one of the things that they will do is they will touch the antenna of the honeybee. What happens at this point is our honeybees will feed them the nectar that, that they have or the honey that they have in their gut. And so they're actually feeding the robbers that are robbing their hive. The females will then lay their eggs in the pollen cells, as I mentioned earlier. What can you do as a beekeeper 
to help keep your hive from being overcome with small hive beetles. One is, is placing your hive that gets 10 full hours of sun each day. If you put your hive, and this is a good example on this picture, is there is no trees to be found and our bees don't need shade like we do. They are very, very much accommodating to the weather. Sunlight is never going to be an issue for them there. Now, when you put it into 100% or 10, 10 hours of sun, let's say, the soil is dry. The small high beetle larva that is crawling out into the moisture will not be able to get into the ground because it's dry. Lack of moisture is a very good deterrent on keeping the small hive beetle from repopulating within the hive. If you keep your, your hives under trees, like this picture, if you have small hive beetles, this is going to be a great breeding ground. As you can see, the shade that's there right at midday, you're just going to have every single one of those larvae being able to get into the ground and pupate. All right, so more sun, the better. The sun is a blessing, it's not a curse when it comes to our bees. Don't create that beekeeper error of saying, I gotta keep my bees cool. So landscaping fabric, you can buy it at any hardware store or landscaping supply, they have it. You can tack it down so you, when you run your lawnmower uh, around it or over it, it doesn't kick up and tear up your lawnmower or tear up all, all the landscaping fabric that's there. And it creates heat because it's always a black fabric. And especially as these hot temperatures that we're seeing currently, it will burn them up in a heartbeat. Now I wanna talk about something else that we can use is diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth is a pretty cool item for us as beekeepers to use. Now it has to stay dry. That's the big negative. So if you use this, and it rains, you gotta go out and reapply it. But this is a mechanical pesticide that sticks to the beetle. And when it sticks to the beetle, it also scratches their protective coating and that just brings their death to a very quick endpoint on that there. And it also sticks to the joints. What is diatomaceous earth? It's basically uh, fossilized shells and what it is is it's crushed up and when it's crushed up, it's like a fine powder that we see with our human eye. But for these pests, it is a death certificate for them. So just remember, this is something that you'll have to reapply. And I've seen some beekeepers use this for, for a month nonstop. For ants, diatomaceous earth. For small high beetles, same thing. For roaches, same thing. So diatomaceous earth goes after any kind of insect. Now, it will harm your bees. So you wanna be able to use it in a way that where your bees aren't hanging out, which would be straight underneath of the hive itself. And it is a mechanical pesticide, so it, it's not gonna linger, except if your bees get into it or if it doesn't rain. That does it for diatomaceous earth. Now, the last one that I wanna talk about is nematodes. Now, nematodes are virtually everywhere that this earth has. They're in the bottom of the ocean. They're right up in the mountain ranges. So nematodes are microscopic organisms and you can't see them with your eyes. You gotta use a microscope. These nematodes, it takes time. You put it on the ground, you water the, your ground and they will go down in into the ground. What we're talking about is about 5 million of these in a 400 square foot plot. So you'd wanna go all through your bee area that you have for your bees and put them in. This is not a quick fix uh, like diatomaceous earth. This is something that you wanna set up now for next spring for those nematodes to be able to, to go right after the larva from the small hive beetle. The studies that have been on nematodes is, is that once the small hive beetle larva gets into the ground, they're dead within 24 to 48 hours. So this is a very, very quick fix. And you gotta water your yard that this area is in 
to begin with, but then they kind of take care of themselves thereafter. So let's talk a little bit about the Beetle Gel. The Beetle Gel is set up as a bait and kill off all at the same time. There's three bays, and that first bay in the middle is where we put the bait. Apple cider vinegar is the attractant that pulls these small high beetles, regardless of their size, the mature size, either the size of a pencil head or, or larger, that brings them into the trap. Now, when they crawl into the trap, they fall into the mineral oil that's on each side of the apple cider vinegar. And with that, they drowned in that mineral oil. So it is a mechanical way of treating. It will agitate your bees a little bit, the apple cider vinegar, because it's a foreign smell within the hive, but it does remarkable. I don't know of any other mechanical ways of treating for small high beetles than with the beetle gel. Okay, so you have a hive that you're seeing just a lot of activity from small high beetles. And let me have a frame. All right, so what I will do is I will have this um, parallel with the top and I'll go like this and just shake it once or twice. You gotta be quick on this. That dislodges the small high beetles and they're crawling around. And what I use is the, the flat end of my hive tool <laughs> crunch, just to mash crunch. them. This is stone age, but it works, but it takes a lot of time. This is something that you would have to go through every frame within your hive. And then once you get all those small high beetles off from each of those frames, you put it into a clean hive. And so you're working these through one by one and by the time you're done, this is all gonna be a mess and you'll wanna wash this off. That is the only way to clean house and do it effectively. One of our friends, I'm not sure how to say his name, says that uh, he does a good job of smashing them. So there's others that use yeah. the uh, the smash technique. Anger management is really good with um, using this technique. Um, so you might wanna think about that, Ryan. No, oh, okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, this comes from Safe at Home Medical. One last question about the beetle jail. Is it okay just to put them on the top boxes or do I need to go down deeper? I would first of all, only put the beetle gels at the top. And the reason being is, is that's typically where you will find the small high beetles on that. So I would put them on each corner. So you get one on one side, one on the other, and you're gonna check those beetle gels once a week to make sure that the bait and the mineral oil have not evaporated within the hive. 